Hello. Here's a, uh, a video on um, steelwork connections and uh, this time the video is on uh, eccentric bolted connections but with in-plane bending and uh, hopefully I'll come back to this strange picture at the, uh, at the end of the video if I remember. Right, here's, a, here's an interesting connection. There's a column here which has two plates fixed to it and uh, with angles uh, fixed to them in turn they support a crane beam and crane beams typically carry very heavy uh, loads or potentially carry very heavy loads so if I were to draw that out on plan there would be a um, column with a couple of plates attached to it and then each plate has got a, an angle bolted to it and then running across that angle I'll just draw the centre line of the crane beam there it is so on plan we have a column a couple of plates and then the crane beam running along the top and that crane beam can carry some heavy loads and it pushes down and it's the bolts between the plates and the column flanges that hold it in place. Right. So this time the connection is in the plane of the plate and the rotation is going to take place in the plane of the bolts. So this is uh, in plane bending and um, the system or the method uh, for designing connections uh, within plane bending is very similar to that for out of plane bending. First thing you do is uh, you look at a set of bolts. I'll just talk through these um, these slides from a PowerPoint, and uh, then we'll apply it to that that exercise. So here's a here's a plate with two, four, six, eight bolts in it, and a bending moment applied to it. So it's tending to twist that plate around there we go it's twisting it around so the it's twisting it around some point so the first thing we have to do is work out where is the center of rotation of this plate is it going to rotate around one of the bolts or elsewhere well in fact it tends to rotate around the centroid of the bolts so that the resistance of each bolt um, directly relates to its distance from the center of rotation and you might might be able to um, intuitively see that the bolts further away are going to be working harder than the bolts close to the centre of rotation and if I were to put a bolt bang through the middle of the centre of rotation then that would carry no no forces whatsoever all the other bolts are going to be carrying shearing forces due to the plate wanting to twist let me show the next picture here's a, an exaggerated um, picture uh, showing how if the plate did twist round all of these bolts would twist around in a circle and you can see that for each bolt it's uh, it's it's being sheared in a slightly different direction to other bolts and the ones at the bottom are being sheared downwards and the ones at the top are actually being sheared upwards okay well this this arrow this direction of rotation of the bolt is actually the direction of the shear on the bolt and because it's a, a diagonal, and I'm an engineer, I would like to find the, um, the vertical and the horizontal components of that force so that I can deal with, deal with it uh, more straightforwardly. And the way I'm going to do that is um, simply by saying that there's a vertical component, there's a horizontal component, and uh, they're linked together by the uh, resultant in a load triangle. It's as simple as that, nothing special. <laughs> so, uh, so each of these bolts with a diagonal shear force has got a vertical and horizontal component. Well that's useful because in reality very few connections have simply a bending moment applied to them. Most connections have a bending moment and a shear force because often as not you're supporting vertical loads just like that crane beam is supporting some vertical loads. So each of these bolts is going to be carrying a shear force due to the rotation of the plate 
but there's also a vertical shear force added to the connection. So each of the volt bolts will be carrying a vertical shear force and we simply split that vertical shear force equally between the number of bolts. Okay, so how do we combine the vertical shear forces from the direct shear with the rotational shear? Well, because we've already made the split of um, taking that diagonal shear force and putting it into a vertical and horizontal components, it's very easy to combine the direct vert vertical com the direct shear force with the vertical component of the rotational shear force, the horizontal component of the rotational shear force, and then work out the resultant. Okay, so let's let's take what we've learned and apply it to this exercise six. We've got. Um, a force here of 450 kilonewtons acting at a distance of 550 mil from this red and red dash dot line and that dash, dash dot line should be running directly through the centroid of these bolts now i reckon that there's 10 bolts here and the centroid of those bolts is bang in the middle okay so i'm taking my bending moment as the distance from the applied force to the center of the uh, bolt group I work out that bending moment um, equals it's 450 kilonewtons times 550 millimeters, and that gives me 247 500 kilonewton meters. Okay, that's good. Now what I want to do is uh, something very similar to the, what we do with the um, outer plane bending. Is I want to find out the um, the sum of the squared distances of each bolt from the points of rotation. So I'm going to actually work out the sum of all the x squareds and all of the y squareds. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to work out the x squareds first. Each of these bolts is 110 mil away from the position of the centroid when measured along the x-axis. So that's actually 10 bolts. times 110 squared. Okay, so far so good. Now let's work out the distances from the, uh, the vertical distances. Well, these bolts are directly in line with the um, centro centroid of the bolt group, this, the center of rotation. So that's zero distance vertically. These fellas are 140 distance. So there's one, two, three, four bolts that are 140 distance. And then there's another four bolts that are 280 distance okay so so that's plus 4 times 140 squared plus 4 times 280 squared and all that lot adds up to uh, 513 millimeters squared okay now I have to choose one of these bolts to check and uh, I think that the bottom right hand bolt is going to have the greatest uh, shear because it's acting downwards in rotational shear combining with a downwards direct shear force from this fellow 450 kilonewtons. So I'm going to check that one out. So I'm going for the bottom right bolt. Okay, so how does this work out? Let's see. The rotational force in the bolt, I have to, um, that shear force, I have to work out its vertical and horizontal component. So I'm going to work out its vertical component first, and its vertical component, if I call that F, V, um, B, due to bending, the bending, I call it that, and I say that that is the bending moment times I'm working at the vertical force in it, so I need the horizontal distance to the bolt, which is x, all over some of the x squareds plus with the y squareds. So for this, it's the bending moment, 247,500 times x, that's uh, 110, all divided by some of the x squareds and the y squareds, which is 513. Oh, oh, oh. And that equals 135.1 kilonewtons. Great. Now I'm going to work out the direct shear. 
the direct shear, I'm going to call that FVD. And that's simply the vertical shear force divided by the number of bolts, 10 bolts. So that ends up being 45 kilonewtons. Okay, well this top force, that's going straight down, and this fella is also going straight down. I just put the arrows in to help me keep track of what's going on. Now I'm going to work out the horizontal horizontal shear force. There we go. So, due to bending. Due to bending, yeah. Okay, right. And that's going to be, it's going to look something similar to this, but this time I want to know the distance of the bolt from the centroid of the bolt group. And this time it's going to be 280. So I'm using the vertical distance. It's my over the sum of the x squared plus y squared. So this time it's the bending moment, 247, 500 times 280. And that's divided by 513, And that comes to, oh actually that comes to 135.1 kilonewtons. And that's acting in that direction. And I got that answer wrong. That is actually 53.1 kilonewtons. Okie doke. So now I need to join all this together because I've got three forces acting in a couple of directions and I want to join them together. So I have the, the, the force due to direct shear, that's 45 kilonewtons. I have the, the force due to uh, bending but in the vertical direction. So that's 53.1, so I've spotted my error at this point, not later on. And then I have the horizontal force, 135.1, and the resultant, simply where these all, uh, I find it using Pythagoras. So the resultant, R, equals the square root of uh, these two squared, 45 plus 3.1 all squared plus that fellow squared 135.1 squared all square rooted gives me r which comes out as 167 well that's it 167 kilonewtons so the shear force in the bolt at the bottom right hand corner is 167 kilonewtons now i can use this exact same method to find any of the bolts in any of the positions all I have to do is substitute a different dimension that relate to the coordinates of the bolt in these um, in these equations, and I can find it. Now, back to the uh, back to the start. Here's this sign, and you can see that at the bottom of this signpost, there's a um, the signpost is made of a, a CHS section and there are an awful lot of bolts around the bottom. So you probably drive past these uh, many times on the motorway and uh, when the wind blows on this signpost it's going to twist the signpost round and that's a nice way to exert a twisting force on a bolt group. And uh, you could work out the force on any of those bolts using just this method and um, that's a nice way to end the video. So I hope that was helpful.